Welcome back guys to the channel, the only channel on YouTube that actually makes MetaZoo videos. And today guys, I'm going to be teaching you all one of the most important things in MetaZoo. If you're playing the card game, the TCG, if you're brand new to the game, if you're like decent and you want to get better, it's an important video for you guys. Today I'm going to teach you all, I'm going to give you guys some deep down stuff about how to side deck. Side decking is one of the most important things. If you're going out to locals, if you're going out to the big Collecticon events, if you're going out to Caster's Cup 2023, uh, wherever it is, doesn't matter. You need to learn how to side deck or you're going to be losing a lot of game twos and a lot of game threes. And you're going to be ending up going X and five by the end of the day. And you don't want that. You don't want that. So let me go ahead and show you guys some side deck stuff. And uh, yeah. So now we're over at the computer at castersociety.com, one of the greatest places to go out and look at deck lists. They have all the big tournament deck lists, and it's pretty good. Um, also with me, guys, I have my co-host, a glass of tea. So um, yeah, actually I have some cherry pick decks uh, that I already kind of looked at and I wanted to talk about while we are here. So first off, guys, we're going to go over, uh, we're going to go over this one first. So this deck is a cosmic deck that placed recently king of the chill top eight is placed played by herm the goat now side decking is very important one thing that if you feel like there is a more defined meta in the current game if you feel like people are doing a certain thing you can go ahead and move stuff from the side deck make it a main deck thing so one thing that i've been seeing a lot of consistently has been absorb aura a lot of people have been main decking multiple copies of Absorb Aura because there has been a lot of crystals out in the game. There's been a lot of them. There's a lot of fast decks out there. And if you're not able to pop their crystals within one turn, if you don't have an immediate response, you're going to get outpaced like crazy. Like if you let Fearsome Critters get out, you know, three or four Aura by turn two, you're done. You're done. You're losing that game. So I feel like the more controlly decks can actually main deck Absorb Aura. And as far as I'm concerned, I think... Oh, he's actually not even side decking him. He's not side decking more. Two is probably good for his deck. Uh, now, this side deck, I think, is overall pretty solid. He's side decking another Transfiguration. Uh, this card is really, really good in Cosmic. It just makes a beastie into a sheep. Only negative about this is that in case uh, there's a beastie that has Power Up Red on it, it's still going to have the Power Up Red on it. It doesn't, like, make it... Yeah, it just becomes a sheep, but it would still have the power pred on it. It doesn't remove it from field or anything. Uh, so keep that in mind. Dampen, always really, really good card. Really nice to be able to stop some stop some spells, you know. A lot of people have been main decking second anniversary, though, to stop neutral spells. Unholy Fire. This is mainly to stop Flatwoods. So Unholy Fire, actually, people have been main decking it as well. Unholy Fire is really good against Flatwoods Monster. Flatwoods Monster has exactly 50 life points. And being able to just pop this in one go, in one turn, really, really nice. It can get you out of the loop pretty fast. Uh, Destroy Terrors. This, I would imagine, is exclusively for Lightning. If you're playing against Lightning and they don't have their Terra, they're crying. They're crying very, very bad. Uh, they really want their Terra. And it's a zero cost. This card's really, really good. Probably better than... Terraforming. Terraforming is another cosmic option, uh, but it does cost one or this costs zero. <clears throat> one other card I didn't want to mention was Devoid Potion. I know some people in my in my uh, local community were a little bit confused on why you would be using Devoid Potion. So first off, guys, we're going to read the card and then I'll explain to you exactly what you would counter with it. You may contract this page at any time. All non-aura and non-terra pages are considered neutral pages while being contracted until the end of the turn. So, Devoid Potion does not change the cost of a card that's being contracted. So, if there is a Quetzalcoatlus on the field, it still costs four, er, in your hand. It would still cost four Lightning Aura to contract, but while you're contracting it, the page would be considered a neutral page. So, what would you be stopping with that? Specifically, you would be stopping 
Torrential River. This is the main card that you'd be stopping. Let me get this is a bigger picture. Yeah. This pay so this is the main card that you'd be stopping. In response to someone playing Torrential River, you would go ahead and respond with Devoid Potion. And the nice thing about Devoid Potion is that for the rest of that turn, the opponent cannot play water cards. The, on contract, the cards that they play will not be water. They will be considered neutral pages. So we'll go ahead and read Torrential River so you guys understand. The second part, this page costs zero already contract if you've already contracted a Torrential River this turn. If not, each time you contract a water page this turn, bookmark one, deal 30 damage. So they'd be shooting, uh, they'd only be playing neutral cards. So at that point, they'd be shooting blanks. They won't be drawing. Th their turn is done. This card is, Devoid Potion is better than Dampen because it actually just stops their turn. So really, really great card. Uh, just in case you guys were confused, I know I even had a comment the other day asking about it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Bubbling Brew, really, really great card. This is a good way to get past sleep. It only inflicts five damage. So if you have a slept BC, if you have a sleepy that has a, if you have a BC that has a sleep counter on it, you would deal ten damage to it. It wakes up, or uh, excuse me, removes the sleep counter, wakes up. Uh, really, really good. And the other thing is it also pops Gumbaru. So Gumbaru. One thing I do want to mention with Gumbaru. <clears throat> Gumbaru, when he is damaged, actually, I don't know. There's a lot of printings of Gumbaru. Let me pull up this one. Gumbaru, whenever he is damaged, whenever he takes damage from a fire page or is inflicted with burn, he is placed into afterlife. He is not destroyed. So just keep that in mind, guys. Whenever Gumbaru gets damaged by a fire page, he's not destroyed. Uh, this would just go ahead and make Gumbaru just... Get rid of Gumbaru. Really, really great card. Uh, just keep that in mind. I do. I did want to point out that specific ruling because Forest Spirits are out there, and uh, Bubbling Brew is a really good counter for that. It's 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 a dual purpose side deck card, and it's really really good. Anti Potion Potion. It's okay. It, it depends on if your opponent needs using Lightning in the bottles, and even then, you know, it's okay. It's an okay card. It's okay. Next off, guys, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about this deck. Hmm. Yeah, this deck was actually main decking three absorb auras. So you guys know how I mentioned a minute ago that absorb aura is really good. I mean, this deck is even playing crystals, and it's still main decking absorb auras. Super, super good. It is also main decking a copy of Second Anniversary Celebration. I know a lot of people have been side decking this card. I feel like. As a main deck, it's really solid. At the very least, you're going to be stopping Power of Red and New Year's New Beginnings. At the very minimum, you'll be stopping that. You could also stop Absorb Aura because it is a neutral spell. So in case you're really relying on having these crystals out, you could main deck Second second Anniversary Celebration. Uh, side deck. Main thing here is Hateful Demise. This card just destroys magic-proof BCs, and it also destroys BCs that have two or more traits. Really, really great, so it just destroys a Quetzalcoatlus. It destroys pretty much anything in the Lightning deck, uh, so that's really, really good. Quetzalcoatlus, Phantom Card, Thunderbird, uh, Gargantuan Gliders. I mean, it stops a lot of the stuff, and it also destroys Frog. So that's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I think that's the main thing I wanted to uh, talk about in there. <clears throat> Next off, guys, we have uh, Medikai's King of the Chill deck. This is a top eight deck. And what did I want to talk about in here? Well, Medikai, I really like this deck a lot. It feels like this deck has a lot of different side deck stuff. But instead of side decking it, he main decked it. So... The, the important thing to remember, guys, is you're going to be play, playing a lot more game ones than you are game twos and threes. So if you feel like you're looking out for a certain matchup, you could potentially main deck and side deck a little bit differently, you know? Um, so the thing here, he's main decking second anniversary celebration. That's specifically to stop, uh, I would imagine in this deck, you could also stop first anniversary. You could stop Krypton Nation. 
keep that in mind. There's a lot of good neutral spells out there you can stop. Uh, he is also main decking two copies of Lightning Split. This card deals 90 damage. Really, really good. Uh, it does destroy a Quetzalcoatlus in one hit. The other nice thing is in case he's playing against Cosmic, this card uh, destroys Fresno Nightcrawlers. It also stops Flatwoods Mon or it destroys Flatwoods Monster. And it's really good. 90 damage is nothing to laugh at. It's really, really good. And it costs only Lightning Aura. So you don't really have to go crazy and run prisms. You know, you don't have to, you know, be running fires in the deck and having as many dead cards. The only card in here that he's running that's like a different color is Growth. That's really good. I mean, it just draws five cards. Uh, the other main deck thing, which is Lightning. This is, again, I would say probably to help with sleep. Uh, there's a lot of sleep in the in the metagame currently, and this helps a lot, especially what what I heard that Medikai was doing like the, the whole weekend, he was just doing double witches lightning and like popping whole fields of fireballs. And that's really, really good. Uh, green fireballs. Green fireballs, really, really great card. Uh, it has 35 health, so it's safe against a lot of things. But if you have a double witches lightning, I mean, what are they going to do, right? What are they going to do? Nothing, really. Uh, so that's really, really good. Uh, other than that, guys, in the side deck, he is side decking Absorb Auras. He is side decking another Lightning Storm, just in case he plays against the Cosmic matchup. And uh, his Field Spell gets destroyed. Or, not Field Spell, Terror Page. If it's Terror Page, gets destroyed. He has another one in the side deck, just in case. And in this side deck, guys... He's actually playing the Columbia River Sand Squink. I think this card is slightly better than Bubbling Brew in a way. Um, it is a 3 cost BC. Nice thing about him, his power destroys a target BC Fearsome Critter with less lower cost in this page. So it destroys anything that would be in the Fearsome Critter deck. Squonk, uh, Gumbaroo, Axe Handle, and Rope Ripe destroys all of them. And this guy can be used multiple times. You could also lightning in a bottle the Columbia River Sand Squink. Really, really great card. I feel like this is probably a better side deck than Bubbling Group. And Necromancy. If you feel like you're going to be going into grind games, Necromancy can be very good. Especially if you're playing against the Lightning Mirror Match. Whoever gets out and keeps the most Quetzalcoatluses on the field and in the deck, whoever has the most threats is probably going to win. And, uh, yeah, everything else looks pretty standard. We got one more deck to look at, guys. We got the Caster Society UFO Clash. We got the second place person. Uh, so this deck overall, I want you guys to take a look at it real fast while I take a sip of my tea. This deck, really, really great. It is a little bit outdated. Uh, it's, I don't remember when this event specifically took place. Let me see. Does it say, does it say when UFO Clash happened? No, um, I'm, I'm not going to say it's outdated. I'm going to say it's like a month old, Not e probably a month old maybe. I mean, it's still a really, really good deck. Uh, some things in here that I wanted to talk about is this deck was main decking Wakanyan. Wakanyan's very, very good. A lot of different people in the current metagame are playing a lot of Absorb Auras. So this is a good way to get around Absorb Auras in case you're scared of it, whether you want to main deck it or side deck it. He basically, you pay 50 life points and you get one extra aura per that turn, which is really great. His destroyed effect, generate two lightning aura. Really, really great. You can't absorb aura rock and yons, so that's also a really, really good solid. Um, outside of that, guys, Balancing Beam, I think is a really good side deck card. Balancing Beam, really, really great. Your deal damage to a caster page equal to 10 times the number of years between your age and years and the chosen caster's age in years. So that's really, really good. Um, if you are, let's just say like, right, you're going to a tournament and you're 13 years old, you'd probably want to be main decking two balancing beams because this card, first off, it's a neutral cost. Second off, it's one of the best spell cards in the game if you're 10 years older or younger than someone. So 
I would imagine this player was probably on the younger side, I would assume. Main deck imbalancing meme is really, really good. The side deck can get also could be really good. It's better than a lot of different spell cards in the game. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention is that if you're going to locals and you know who, more or less who's going to be there, maybe you main deck a copy of Balancing Beam. I know my guy John uh, was out here at locals this past Thursday. He was actually main decking. He was main decking a copy of Balancing Beam because he's the oldest person there. He's like I think 35, and we're all around the average age of players. We're around 23 to 26. So, I mean, that's a really safe main deck if you're going to locals. Side deck, it could be usable. Could be usable. Um, side deck, guys, he is also side decking. One thing I'm going to mention here is Metal Man of Alabama. This card, just in case your opponent isn't running radio on their fourth wall list, it's really, really great. A 70 life point body, 50 damage. Really good. If you have tinfoil on your fourth wall list, too. It only costs two aura. It also combos with Dingbell. Uh, the other things in here that I would like to mention is he has a lot of uh, trade hate in this side deck. He has Toxic Water as well. I'd imagine this is for the Ami Cooks. This card does unburrow a beastie when it's used. One thing I do want to mention about first anniversary celebration, if you're playing against the Ice deck, I should... Okay, so... This is the card right here. It nullifies all traits on all pages until the end of next turn. One thing I do want to mention about Ami Cook. Ami Cook. One thing I do want to mention about Ami Cook is that whenever he does burrow, if you activate first year anniversary, it does not automatically unburrow the BC. What first anniversary does is it makes it so that Ami Cook cannot burrow at the start of every turn. If he burrowed already at the start of your turn, then it would be like a status condition, right? Uh, burrow is like a status condition if he is already burrowed. Uh, someone, I, the terminology might be a little bit off, but basically, first anniversary celebration does not unburrow a beastie. If he's burrowed for that turn, he's going to be burrowed for that turn. So keep that in mind, guys, in case you are playing against ice. Uh, you would want to toxic water water it or if you do have first anniversary celebration keep in mind that he will be burrowed for the rest of that turn if he is burrowed uh, this is one thing I wanted to mention and uh, lightning bolt lightning bolt's also pretty good um, I would imagine what would this be for right uh, this would probably be for beasties that have uh, arena effects that you're really scared of uh one thing is that it could stop gasodendra so that's pretty cool i would imagine that's why he's not side decking devoid potion um so lightning bolt would paralyze a bc automatically and it would remove the effect text of that bc until the end of the following turn so your opponent would you would pass to your opponent your opponent would not be able to activate uh gasodendra's uh field arena effects let me just go and type up the card so you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't be able to activate his arena effect, which is really, really solid. And uh, yeah, I think that's probably what it's in there for. Aside from that, if you're able to... I don't know. If you're able to save up a little bit of aura, if you're, if you're trying to protect Dingbell, that could also be a possibility. Uh, in case you're trying to stop an opponent's Gatsakotalus, that could also be good. And, uh, yeah, he is also, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully, I'll enjoy the video. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to go as in-depth as I can. If y'all have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And, um, yeah, goodbye.